almost immediately knew that I was in trouble because I couldn't stop. And I was moving fast at that point. It's a beautiful but rugged wilderness where few people ever go. It was a sunny day, but it was cool, probably temperatures in the 30s, around 30 degrees Fahrenheit. I had my kayak on top of my truck, hopefully planning on going kayaking later that afternoon. I didn't see any bikers or hikers out, just myself and Taz. Come on, Taz. I brought my water bottle. At the last minute, I thought, well, I'll grab this little waste pack so I don't have to carry the water bottle in my hand. That way I could just put the water bottle in the waste pack. And it was a small waste pack with two zipper pockets. I didn't know what was in those pockets. I just um, grabbed it and whatever was in there from my previous run was in my uh, waste pack. And um, I headed out on the run. Let's go. I had absolutely no idea that my life was gonna completely change that day. Come on, boy. Despite its beauty, the backcountry surrounding Moab can be hostile and dangerous. Just in the last month, two men have fallen victim to the deadly terrain, found frozen to death in the bitter desert night. Search and rescue teams are called out regularly to save hikers in distress. But Donnell is fearless. Six times the winner of US Athlete of the Year, she thrives on pushing herself to the limit in the most extreme environments. I was actually in pretty, pretty good physical condition that I usually could push myself right to that, to that limit of pain, but not quite go over it. It actually almost feels good, like you get into the rhythm, get into the flow. Danelle's training route is not marked on any map. And with every step, she's heading further into uncharted territory. All of a sudden, the, the next thing I know, Taz was ahead of me, and my foot slipped out from under me. almost immediately knew that I was in trouble because I couldn't stop. And I was moving fast at that point. And then the last 20 feet were an overhang. Free fall. I definitely had time to see my life kind of spin through my head and, and think about maybe I wasn't gonna see another day. And then, boom. Oh my god, I'm still alive. I didn't know what I had done to myself, but I knew I had hurt myself pretty bad. It's a horrendous fall. The impact has shattered Donnell's pelvis into pieces, leaving her skeleton severed in two. There's nothing but soft tissue connecting her legs to the rest of her body. Super athlete Donnell goes into survival mode. Somehow my brain didn't allow itself to think too deeply about what had happened. Despite her terrible injuries, Donnell's endurance training kicks in and she's determined to keep moving. So what I did is I took my, my right hand and put it on my right leg and my left hand and put it on my left leg and I could feel my legs. And so I knew that I wasn't paralyzed. And my next reaction was, I gotta get out of this canyon. I gotta get back to my truck and I gotta get, I gotta get home or I gotta get to the hospital. Incredibly, despite her shattered pelvis, the endurance athlete tries to stand up and run out of the canyon. Oh. 
But with her skeleton effectively in two, Danelle's legs cannot support her body. Unable to walk or run, she's facing her worst nightmare. Her legs useless, she's alone on a ledge, separated from her dog, Taz. Danelle is stranded in a thousand square miles of barren, uninhabited wilderness. I knew that I needed to get out of that canyon. The temperatures were cold, and it was the middle of winter. But I couldn't stand up, I couldn't walk. So I just started dragging myself. With her skeleton broken in two, shattered at the pelvis, Danelle is critically injured. Most people would be in agony, but super fit athlete Danelle is experiencing an enormous adrenaline surge masking the pain. But the problem for Danelle now is which direction to go. She's no idea if there's a safe way down from the ledge. Taz comes to Danelle's rescue. Taz has found her way back through the canyon to reach her. She is no longer alone, but Taz's appearance brings more than comfort. Since he had gotten to where I landed, I knew that there was a route out, so I used him as my guide and kind of dragged myself where he went um, along the shelf and then back down to the bottom of the canyon. With incredible determination, Danelle follows Taz to the bottom of the canyon and now plans to pull herself back to her truck. But as the adrenaline surge wears off, the pain is starting to take a hold. It would take all my energy to sort of drag myself an inch. And, uh, and then I would, the pain would be so bad, I would have to regroup and try it again. Time is working against Danelle. She knows the dangers of this remote wilderness. And that if she doesn't reach safety by nightfall, the sub-zero temperatures could kill her. With her energy slipping away, Danelle remembers her waste pack. Oh. I didn't know what was in that waste pack because I didn't check before I left. And, um, and one of them was a little gel pack, sugar pack, um, that endurance athletes often bring with them to help provide energy for running. Eating the gel provides Danelle with a much needed boost, as well as a moment to reflect on the colossal task she's taking on. But her progress is excruciatingly slow. At one point I looked back at my tracks and I could just see where I dragged myself through this canyon. It took me probably two and a half hours just to get to the bottom, dragging myself inch by inch. The canyon that took me maybe two or three minutes to, to walk up. The only comfort Danelle has is her dog's constant companionship. Taz was with me this whole time. I think he probably realized that I was injured. <coughs> I think he was kind of wondering why I was going so slow. As the winter sun sets, the temperature is dropping below freezing. Daylight is fading fast, and with it, any chances of getting out of the canyon before nightfall. Despite Danelle's superhuman efforts, She's far from safety. 